Hey everyone, in this video I will do fine tuning of Distil Bird for multi-class text classification and the dataset I will choose for this one is called BBC Text. We will see the dataset shape and the contents of the dataset in a second and I am giving the link of the dataset over here and obviously the notebook link that is a GitHub link will be given in the description of this video. And as expected you need to first install transformer package or pretty much all hugging face project and then you need to import the relevant modules so here because i am i am doing uh, this whole project with tensorflow so and also using distilbert model so if there are some classes that you need to import uh, which are distilbert tokenizer then tf distilbert for sequence classification and also text classification pipeline because at the end during the inferencing i'm i'm going to use this pipeline methodology and the rest of the modules is pretty much standard tensorflow pandas um, nltk and uh, seaborn matplotlib etc let's first read the data set so i have already uh, from this link i have already downloaded the data set into my local machine and this is the data set when i'm just doing pd.read csv and then just printing the head so the data set is pretty simple it has got only two text columns so one is the actual text of the news that is its bbc news and the category it represent the main topic of that news that is a whole text uh, for example the first whole text of the first row the main topic is tech technology and then for the next one the main topic is business and so on and uh, let's check out the uh, shape of the data set yeah so we have got 2225 uh, number of rows and two columns okay the first thing i will do is quickly plot a histogram to see the count of the text eight and eight Oh, I think I need to first um, include uh, another another uh, code, another lines of code to uh, get the count of each of the text. Let's do that. Yeah, that should give me the count. Let's run this cell and also now check. Yeah, now I have a count of the text. Okay. And uh, yeah, so now I can plot the counts. Uh, yeah, that was just count. I also need plt.title and plt.show. Okay, so that's my dist plot, the number of words of the distribution. And below we see the number of words. So we can see that uh, most of the words are concentrated towards, most of the numbers uh, uh, in, a, in a particular text is concentrated towards these. Like, for example, uh, maybe 150 up to, up to all the way up to maybe 500. Uh, okay. So it's actually it's a good news for our uh, BART modeling because DistilBART can tokenize up to 512. That is the max length of token acceptable by DistilBART is 512. Okay, next one uh, I want to do is do a bar plot of each of the news category. Okay. So category. Uh, 
account dot index let's see category all right so these are my categories sport business politics tech entertainment five of them and uh, yeah now let's plot a uh, bar plot add subplots on the x i want to show the category counts and uh, and what is our category count let's quickly see for this yes so this is uh, this little thing sports business politics okay uh, we got this from category count dot index here. Yeah. So on the X my category count dot index and on the Y and then I just want to uh, for the plotting I want to annotate uh, the plot a little bit. So you can go i'm just uh, enumerating through ax.patches and then uh, adjusting the heights with get x and then get width and get height with all these methods you can just go through the plotting um, methodologies and official documentation of sns or matplotlib to understand this and uh, then i just need to add the x level y level let's run this cool so that's my plotting so yeah so it's pretty balanced data set because pretty much all the categories are well represented in the overall uh, scheme of things okay now i uh, need to get uh, uh, need to get the quickly check one thing category Actually, it will print the same thing. That is all the names of the category columns, unique values. And then create, uh, cre uh, now I need to create new column and encode the category levels because these categories are text. We cannot feed them into the model. Machine, any machine learning model will not take text directly. We have to somehow encode them and get, get the numbers. So what I'll do is I am going to make use of cat.codes. Let's see. DF new new column name is encoded text. S type category. Now cat dot codes. Cool. So now all my text have been encoded with these uh, five unique numbers because I have five categories. So the encoded text here also represent five unique numbers: zero, one, two, three, four. To understand how that cat.codes uh, work you can check out the categorical data official page in pandas documentation and here they say that uh, all values of categorical data are either categories or np.nan internally the data structure consists of categories array and an integer array of codes which point to the real value in the categories array so this is what i accessed in this line and set that cat.codes to be my new column encoded text okay uh, and now another thing i need to quickly do which is data feature list and also encoded encoded cat 
two, two last. Okay. Uh, sorry, the new column name I said encoded text, so that would be encoded text. Okay. And so this this is just a list of values that I created or extracted from the data frame. You can just quickly print my uh, data labels. Yeah, so this is just a whole list of values. Uh, that is all. And note that these uh, data text uh, still has to be converted or tokenized, converted to a tokenized vectors before we can use the machine learning model. And uh, well, we, we will do that in a second. But before this, let's uh, do another thing, which is very important. Train test split. So that's a trend and validation text. Now I also want to keep some data for the inference for testing. So I'm going to split the train part again. Actually put S to all of this. Uh, 10% of the data from my this train text portion as a validation or evaluation set so 0, 0.0, 0. 0. Uh, actually zero, keep it 0. Uh, 0. 0.01 very small percentage because here the total number of uh, data rows are not too big we have like 2400 or so so I'm not wasting too much of data into the test part. All right, now model definition. And uh, for our model choice, we are going to use Distilbird base on cast. And since we want to use Distilbird for classification task, we will use uh, Distilbird tokenizer for the tokenizer class to tokenize our a text and then use tf distilbird for sequence classification class in in the next cell for the uh, pre-training of the model and if you want to check out the hugging face official documentation for distilbird that's where it is so you know, what they're saying is this model is distilled version of the bird base model it was introduced in this paper the code for the distilled bird uh, process can be found here okay so for the model description distilled bird is a transformer model smaller and faster than bird which was pre-trained on the same corpus in a self-supervised fashion using the bird base model as a teacher this means it was pre-trained on the raw text only with no human labeling them in any way which is why it can use lots of publicly available data with an automatic process to generate inputs and labels from those texts using the bird base model and more precisely it was pre-trained with uh, three objectives distillation loss master language modeling and cosine embedding loss so the distillation loss is a model was trained to return the same probabilities as a bird model uh, yeah, anyway, so internet use and limitation, you can use the raw model for either masked language modeling or next sentence prediction, but it's mostly intended to be fine-tuned on a downstream task. That's what we are going to do.
we are going to fine tune it for a downstream task. And note that this model is primarily aimed at being fine tuned on tasks such as whole sentence to make decision, uh, such as sequence classification, token classification, or question answering. For tasks such as tech, uh, text generation, you should look at model like GPT-2, obviously. And for the how to use, this is uh, how they are giving the example. Okay, now let's get back to. So first, we are going to define the tokenizer. This. So the distilbert tokenizer will generate input IDs and attention mask as outputs. Uh, this is what is required by the distilbert model as its inputs. So when we pass text through the tokenizer, the generated output will be in the format expected by the distilbert architecture. And now to this tokenizer, I will pass the train and validation set. text and then truncation equal to true and also padding equal to true so uh, when i say truncation equal to true that means they will truncate the text according to the value set by max max length for the respective model and uh, for the padding if set to uh, true uh, so sorry, the, the padding takes quite a few different uh, argument. Uh, so here I'm using the boolean. It also takes longest. For example, if I set it at longest, the pa uh, the, then the pads to the longest sequence in the batch. So here is a documentation for the padding. Um, so true or longest means pad to the longest sequence in the batch. No padding is applied if you only provide a single sequence. Um, yeah, and false means do not pad, no padding is applied. Okay, so here I am just doing true. That means it's equivalent to the longest sequence. Well, text. And the rest will just be the same. Okay. And then I also, before moving on, I also need to um, convert our input encodings and labels into TensorFlow dataset object. That is tf.data.dataset object. So train dataset. That's data dot dataset. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry, from because we are getting these um, data from tensor, so I need to use from tensor slices. And to that, you pass a dict of val encodings and then also val labels. Cool. Uh, sorry, so this is my train, so it would be train encoding and train labels, that is all. And for the validation, I will have a different one, which is this. Okay, now I am ready to do my fine tuning. So, uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use... Um, the trainer class so i need to import from transformers import uh, tf actually i need to import both tf uh, uh, distill bar sequence tf trainer and tf trainer argument like this transformer yeah and then i just need to uh, update my configuration So that's my training arguments, uh, all the parameters. And uh, now 
I need to define a little context manager uh, that would be with training orgs dot um, strategy dot scrope and under this context manager I will define my trainer model which is this one from pre-trained and to that I pass the same thing which is this still bird base on cat and our number of classes or number of labels are five so num labels equal to five cool and uh, so we are done with that one N then just the final uh, tf trainer class that I need to define uh, of because I already have the orgs defined so the final thing that I need to define is a tf trainer that's it that will take model as this as this trainer model orgs from this whole orgs train data set and val data set then just run trainer dot uh, train sorry trainer dot train and also after the training i need to do trainer dot evaluate okay and uh, when you run this cell trainer dot train that will start the training and because i'm training for seven epochs it will take something like uh, 15 to 20 minutes with a 16 gb gpu in your collab or kaggle so while it's training uh, while it's training it's i've already put it on training in the kaggle in collab session so while, it, while it's training let's define my uh, saving and uh, after the post training loading of the model uh, variables so they will just be uh, let me save it and then model dot save the trend save the trend that will take the save directory also need to uh, save the tokenizer that is also save directory and then also the relevant code for loading the pre-trained model uh, tokenizer I'm naming the fine tune tokenizer as tokenizer fine tuned distill bird tokenizer dot so you pass the same class that is distill bird tokenizer but here only change is that now uh, uh, the from pre-trained this will instead of taking the name of the model checkpoint like we did uh, while it was loading directly from the hugging face model hub right now because I am loading my fine-tuned model, so I've just passed the save directory where my fine-tuned models are saved. Similarly, model fine-tuned will be TF distillbird for sequence to sequence classification to that dot from and save directory. Cool. And now for testing i will define a test text taking it from test text but let's just take the very first row or the very first text from my test text one uh, let's quickly print it okay and so when you run this cell uh, this is what I get. So this is the very first uh, row from the news article of my test data set. So dollar hovers around record lows. The US dollar hovered close to record lows again. So euro on Friday as a as concern grows about the size of the US budget deficit. Okay, so that's a whole text that I'm going to test my pre uh, fine-tuned model on. 
So let's um, write the code for that evaluation of my fine-tuned model. So for the predicting, first what I need to do is predict input. This is only in inferencing code, remember that. So I need to give tokenizer fine-tuned dot encode. First I need to encode this uh, test text. Pass truncation. Padding equal to true. Return tensor is TF because I'm using TensorFlow. Okay. So the output now will be model fine tuned. To that, I pass these predict input and take the zero as element. Prediction value will just be tf.argmax because the previous line will give me the probabilities and I need to get the maximum probability for uh, for the whole classification for, for this entire text. So tf.argmax again take the zero as element value and after training when i run this the prediction value i get is zero uh, so that is the remember that is the actual encoded class and what was our encoded class if we go back to our previous code where we encoded that where is that yeah here so we encoded each of the categories or each of the classes to uh, actual numerical value and what is the zero value that's business right and that's exactly what this was um, this was uh, predicted and this whole text that is dollar hovers record lows all these things one dollar bought 102.55 bn disappointing business figures uh, all these the entire text was classified as business then that seems to be so much correct all right so that was a fine tuning result done with tensorflow and now I'm going to use the same file that was fine-tuned and trained with TensorFlow to use it with PyTorch to do my inferencing. And we will see that how easy it is to uh, interoperate model files between PyTorch and uh, TensorFlow. So uh, I need to first import Torch. Okay. and then port my tensorflow pre-trained model into pytorch by using a particular parameter called from tf and that's as it easy as it is so load let, let's do fine let's do tokenizer tokenizer pointing pt representing pytorch that will be distill bird tokenizer dot save directory. So everything is just the same. Only thing I need to just add a single argument and uh, model fine. What was the name of that one? Quickly, model fine tuned. Eating. Take all the distill bird or why i'm not getting it oh i need to uh, also import uh, the corresponding class for for pytorch so from So this distilled bird for sequence classification is the pytorch equivalent class of tf distilled bird for sequence classification that we used for tensorflow so all we have to do is just add uh, add tf to get the same model in tensorflow we use the same uh, distilled bird tokenizer uh, that is to define the tokenizer here but for the class i need to use this one retrained n e d 
and that will take save directory and then the most important part is this extra argument from tf equal to true so here the meaning of this is that i'm telling that although this fine-tuned model is a pytorch model but i'm actually loading the model from a tf format because original model was trained in tensorflow so in the opposite case if i trained and fine-tuned the model with pytorch and then i want to load the model into tensorflow then i just have to pass from pt that is uh, original model was trained on pytorch but now i want to use tensorflow to do inferencing all right so that's uh, all that is needed and to do the inferencing predict input pt that would be tokenizer fine-tune pt so that i pass test i'm passing the same text truncation equal to true and padding equal equal to true what else i need return tensor which now will be pt initially it was tf model fine-tuned uh, pt to that i pass predict pt prediction value pt so previously it was tf.argmax now torch.argmax output pt i take zero across dim equal to one dot item and just uh, dot item because I, I just want to print the value of this one and that produced as well the value of zero which is a class of my business that is uh, as you remember this zero represent the category of business so for both tensorflow and pytorch i got the prediction value for the text that um, for the test text we got this zero as the predicted class representing business and which is very right and that was a very baseline implementation of fine-tuning distilled bird for multi-class text classification and further improvement you can do for any more serious project is uh, that you can do some pre-processing on the input text that is for the training corpus also you can run for higher number of epochs or you can do more feature engineering on the input text uh, those are just suggestions to improve your result even further all right that pretty much wraps up this video if you have liked this one smash the like button and also do subscribe because I'm going to do many interesting NLP projects over the coming days and weeks. So see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.